Welcome back. All right, so I want to start off uh, after the trade deadline is now finished. There's still stuff coming out that, you know, teams have done this or this. Nothing really earth-shattering, but I want to talk about this. Uh, so Vegas making this deal with the San Jose Sharks, people are naturally inclined to not like Vegas. Uh, Tomas Hurdle going to Vegas. If you're a Sharks fan, of course, that's the last place you want Hurdle to go. I will say this, though. Uh, Hurdle's contract at the time San Jose signed it was odd to me because it was clear they were a team that needed a rebuild, and I thought trading Hurdle would have made more sense at the time. The reality is that it got signed. Uh, it's an expensive contract for a long time. Vegas takes this contract on for the most part. 17% is retained by the San Jose Sharks. Now, I've been talking for years now uh, about how getting a team to take on a contract is going to cost you something. So I think that's part of the reason why there's draft picks going to the Vegas Golden Knights in this trade. Uh, Tomas Hurdle this year in 48 games, 15 goals, 19 assists, 34 points. Now, he's 30 years of age. His numbers should go up in Vegas. There's no guarantee that they do. Now, Vegas is on the hook now for a $6.75 million cap hit for Hurdle, uh, and that is signed through 2030. So this is a contract that San Jose really did need to get moved out. Uh, the retention means it's a little bit uh, tricky for them now when it comes to trades going forward. Uh, they only have two retaining slots, or they have two retaining slots used between now and 2027. So uh, right now they have three. They have Brent Burns, they have Eric Carlson, and Tomas Hurdle. So those are three veterans that they've moved out. Uh, and the Carlson contract doesn't expire until 2027, meaning you can only retain money from three contracts at a time. And so for San Jose, this really limits what they're going to be able to do until 2027. But getting that contract out was important for Vegas, a team that's been just in a tailspin lately. They needed to turn things around. That's part of what we're seeing here. Uh, with Martinez, their best shot blocking defenseman out. With Stone, their best two-way forward, one of the best two-way forwards in the game out. They needed to do something at the deadline in order to... Uh, make things better. Now, the thing with Hurdle is he's hurt currently. Uh, he is expected back before the playoffs, Pierre Lebrun uh, stating that. So the expectation is he'll join the team before the playoffs. Where it gets kind of tricky for Vegas is this, though. We know that it can take a while for a player to get acclimated to new surroundings and new teammates. Hurdle won't have that. He's just going to be thrown into the lineup. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, right? Um, there, there are cases where a player just they, they hits the ground running just fine, and other times where it takes a while. Sometimes it takes a while to build chemistry. So there's a lot of risk in this for the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, now for San Jose, they get a first-round draft pick next year. Vegas has retained their first-round pick for this season. As far as I can tell, uh, that didn't get moved at the deadline unless something else comes out between now and the end of the day. Uh, David Edstrom being picked up by San Jose in this trade as well. He was the number 32 pick this past year because Vegas always trades their first round picks. Uh, he, or is, he is currently playing in Fralunda, played 42 games, 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points. So in picking up Edstrom, it's a young player, first round draft pick from last year. Remember, last year's draft is seen as being a, is seen as being a very deep draft. And so... Yeah, Edstrom may end up being a player for San Jose sooner rather than later. And for them, I think it really was about moving that Hurdle contract. So we don't know what the situation was behind the scenes. And maybe Hurdle wanted out. Maybe they, they wanted to move him. Maybe he'd only go to Vegas, that kind of thing, right? So we'll see what comes out over the coming weeks and months regarding this. But I, I'm worrying San Jose, not because I think they won the trade, but because I don't think this is as much of a loss as it's being painted out to be. Because having that extra $6.75 million in cap space, having that contract off the books, is potentially huge for San Jose. If they're going to start building up, and especially if they're they're going to make it so that, you know, they could sign some free agents this summer, moving that hurdle contract out could be important. Um, so again, I understand people aren't happy about the trade. Um, I've seen all the circumvention talk and cheating talk and everything, but... Uh, this is a trade between a team that needed to move a contract and a team that needed to pick up some offense uh, and needed to turn things around. So we'll see how it all works out for Vegas. We'll see how it all works out for San Jose and for people who are all angry about this trade. Uh, as I said in the live stream, I'll say it again here. Uh, when the Timo Meyer trade was happened, everybody dunked on that and said how terrible that was for San Jose. It's aged okay. Uh, Timo Meyer in New Jersey, it hasn't been a fantastic fit. 
and we don't know if Hurdle's going to be a fantastic fit for Vegas. So we'll see. Now I say that even though Hurdle had a had a hat trick last night, but he's not quite at 20 goals yet. So not exactly producing the way that one might hope. And I mean, yes, Meyer could turn that around, but uh, it's why I don't declare winners and losers on trade deadline day or draft day either, because I, I think it's kind of silly to, to decide who's won and lost with 18 year olds that just got picked. And I think it's just as silly to decide trades who won and who lost when sometimes it takes years to decide who won or who lost a trade. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you have not done so already. Uh, thank you guys so much for all your support as always. Again, trade deadline is always fun, uh, always an enjoyable time. And thank you guys so much for helping to make it that enjoyable time for me. Uh, so yeah, I'll stop this and then I'll be talking about the other trades that took place as well uh, during the live stream that we just completed. So thank you guys again for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.